we've had a lot of requests ask, asking about how to paint with a palette knife. So let's have a palette knife primer. When you go online and look for palette knives in art supply stores, you're going to see dozens and dozens, all different kinds of shapes. But you don't need all those. In fact, you'll only need one. But it doesn't hurt to have maybe two or three varieties. Just show you uh, something of what might be useful. A large one such as this, if you're going to do a large painting. And you'll notice this one has the trial handle on it. Some of them are flat. But I find having the trial handle is much, uh, get, like, allows you to have a lot more control. This was a, a one that, and I don't even know what it's called, but it's one that has been recently invented um, that enables you to get very flat areas and also sharp areas. This is my traditional just palette knife. Uh, these, by the way, are called painting knives, the, the, the specialty ones. But, um, well, I think this one's called a painting knife, too, but it's also my palette knife. It has the trial, has a wonderful mixing blade, also has a blade that can uh, do palette knife painting for me. And of course, then we have other varieties. We have the sharper point here with a little bit stiffer blade, even a smaller one here with a little blade about as stiff as this is. And then we have this sort, which is a, a very thin and very, a very thin, this way in a very flexible blade. Um, I don't want to try to call those by their names because I don't remember their names. I just go by their shapes. So the two things to be concerned about when you uh, when you want to get a palette knife for painting or a painting knife is the thinness of the blade, this way the sharpness of the blade, and the flexibility. You need some flexibility in the blade and you'll see why I hope in just a moment. So there's the first thing in consideration of a palette knife and I don't know whether ordering a palette knife online if you've never had one before is going to be useful perhaps going into a store and actually check and see how thin sharp the edges are and how flexible it is so one that's really stiff is not going to work for you very as well as one that's more flexible so that's probably enough to say about the knife itself then what happens on the palette is important now, I would advise if you're doing palette knife painting, uh, first, if, you're, if this is your first experience with palette knife painting, I'd advise that you not try to work with a whole bunch of colors. Uh, three colors maximum. In fact, you might even begin just with black and white to give you um, the ability just to control what's going on. I have three colors here because I'm going to do just a very quick not a complete painting, but I'm going to do a very quick little demo here to show how I would use a palette knife to sort of interpret what I'm looking at here. And so, um, here's how it works on the palette. First of all, <clears throat> well, if you're doing palette knife painting, it's a good idea to have a paper towel in one hand and the knife in the other because you often need to wipe the knife. It's, it's important for it to be clean. Alright, so here's how we would begin. Now, I'll just I'll do the mixing and everything that happens on the palette and the and a little demo over here all at once so that we don't waste time saying how this is how you do this and how I do that before we go ahead and do the demo. So first of all, um, it's a good idea to work from top to bottom when you're first laying a palette knife painting in. And that's so that you have more control over what happens with the knife itself. I always do a little bit of a sketch here and I indicate as I've done here, what's in shadow, and these little hatch marks here are indicating what's in shadow. That is the same idea as you've seen in my No. 10 um, preliminary work where I show this is solid, but it doesn't have to be solid here. Just these little hatches to indicate what's in shadow and then what's not in shadow. And that gives me enough to work with. I don't need to get any more detail than that. So I'll start with the sky area and show you how we can go about um, Doing that in palette knife. Yes, you can do a sky and palette knife. I'm going to do most of the work with this little knife. I may reach for one of the others to do some uh, small stuff, but most of the work I'm going to do with my regular mixing knife. So to begin with the sky, I'm going to I'm going to pull some white on the palette, 
and you need, you you will use lots and lots of paint when you're doing palette knife painting. So if you're one of those people who is stingy with your paint, you might not find palette knife painting um, fits fits in with your uh, stinginess. <laughs> all right. So now what I'm going to do here first of all is I'm going to aim here for the value, and I want to get enough paint mixed so that I can cover this entire area. So if you're working very large, that means you would mix a lot of paint. So I want enough to cover this area. And you gauge that by experience. There's no way I can really give you a formula for that. Now I'm going to check. Um, okay, I'm almost in that value range. Pull the paint off the palette knife so I can always have clean color. Pull a little bit more over here and mix it. Now this is the way I like to mix by pulling the paint inward rather than this sort of thing because then you get it all over the palette. Okay, now once I have you know, still a little bit dark for what I want, so I keep mixing. Just a little bit more white for the sky. Now, I get the hue and the value first as far as, and I always do that, that's just a typical thing a typical way I mix paint. Now I'm going to go. I'm going to stick with that value, but that hue that is phthalo blue I'm using. So that hue is way too intense. I have alizarin crimson here. I'm seeing. A, I'm seeing a little bit of violet in the sky, and the the reds that we see in the barn and some reds here in the woods uh, would indicate that we would need to add just a little a bit more red into that sky to pull it in harmony. Uh, with what everything else is there. So I'm not going to take that red and plop it down right there. No, I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to add enough add enough red into the white to get it the value of this. Pretty much the value of that. It's called value correcting. It's not exactly the palette knife. It's all, in all kinds of painting. Alright, that's close. That's good enough. Now, so what I'll do is bring a little bit of that right here. You see, each time I'm wiping off the palette knife, else I'll lose control. So I'll pull a little bit of that in here, like that, and see that changes it a little bit, but not quite enough. So I'll go over and be a little bolder. Pull it right here. And now, let's see, I've got to mix enough paint, enough of that color to cover this area right here. Alright, say so is, is that going to give me the color I need? It's close, but still, it feels a little bit out of harmony. So I'll, I'll go back over here. Now, doing these kind, this kind of patience, uh, kind of uh, color mixing requires patience, but it pay off, pays off in the long run. So maybe you can learn something about that too. And what I'm trying to do is to push that more towards a more towards a little bit more violet in the sky. You see, I keep going back, and I'm maybe taking a long time here just to mix that one color, making a point that if you want to control the color, this is important in palette knife painting to control the hue and the value and then the intensity as it is in brush painting. So here we go. I think that might be it. And that is very close. Now you can see what a difference this blue is from this blue. But I also need to need enough of that. So put just a little more up here. I need enough of that to be sure. Have the now I'm not going to mix that too too much. You can overmix oil paint, and um, and it just uh, it, it loses its its luminosity when you overmix it. Okay. Next step. I don't need any preparation here at all. But I need to load the palette knife. Now here's the way to load it. First of all, we pull the paint smooth. Like that. Pull And then clean the palette knife. And then I load it by uh, turning the palette knife so that the edge of the knife, the edge of the blade, scoops up the paint. And the amount I scoop up is going to be determined by the amount of paint I want here. And then I wipe off any that might be on the top there so that I have control. You will use lots of paper towels when you're doing palette knife painting. Um, so you can just plan on that too. Okay, so now here's what here's how we can go. 
we can go in any direction. I'll start here. I'll pull it this direction. I don't want to overstroke it. And I'll go back and reload. Now check. Okay, if I'm working on an area such as the sky, now I'm going to load it on both sides of both sides of the blade like that. So you see I have plenty of paint on both sides. So I'll go here. Now I'll pull it down here. Now I like to use a variety of strokes uh, of strokes that move in one direction and then in an opposite direction like that. And see now in that little bit of time I have um, a really good sky started that would take me much longer if I were working with a brush. Now that gradates and gets lighter as it goes to the bottom. So I wipe off the palette knife again. I put a little bit more white into that. And I mix the white here so that I have it a little bit lighter. Have that color a little bit lighter. And once again I wipe off the palette knife so I have control. I pull a bead onto the palette knife pull it off the front. Now, I want to place this. First of all, I'm just going to place it right next to, right next to the sky area like that. And I'm going to pull it slightly down to the line of the trees and put, pull it just uh don't have to be really precise about that. And I can go could go much faster. Mixing more. Pull it flat. Load the knife. And work. Now this way I'm going to work. I know probably in your... Let me turn it this way and see if, if you can see what I'm doing. Um, just place in the paint. Load it again. Place the paint. Now I usually will twist around like this and won't get a different grab on it but I want not to be and it may be in your way as it is okay I've got that that's enough now now I can move the knife like this just very gently and blend the lighter part of that sky into the darker part of that sky and I can make that as smooth as I as smooth I can make it just as smooth as I see that sky there or I can leave it uh, partially unmixed. So if I want it as smooth as the sky is, I give it a little bit more. Very now, I need to show you what I'm doing there. I'm I'm pulling the surface of the knife very gently over this paint, and I'm giving it just a little, kind of caressing it with the with the surface of the knife. So you see, you can do that, and you see how smooth I can make that. If I want that sky to be smoother, if I want the blend to be more gradual. I can keep working it like that and just use the back of the knife. But if I want to use have the palette knife, what people call the palette knife look, such as this is, then I just leave it like that. So now for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to leave this like this. No, I would not do that if I were doing a palette knife painting. But I'm demonstrating to you a technique. And so I want you to see the options. The options of having it more, more textured, like you would normally see in a palette knife painting. Or you can have it smooth. And that would also be, as you might see in a palette knife painting, depending on what your choice is. So, coming down, the next part is the sky. All right, I'm going to take, I'm going to mix the, the shadow part, I'm not, not the sky, the next part is the trees. I'm going to take the shadow part of the trees first. Now I'm using, um, this is phthalo blue again. I'm keeping the phthalo blue as a mixing color all the way through. Now this is a light version of cadmium orange. So I'm put some cadmium orange here, pull it in the phthalo blue until I get that, until I get that dark blue green that I'm looking at there. I'm gonna put just a little bit of the, pull a little bit of the alizarin crimson in there, and put a little bit more of this. Now, this will be, um, this will be very quick action. So, pull the knife clean. Pull this flat as I've done. Pull it on the tip. And let's see. Now right here I've indicated the directions of those shadows. So what I'll just do here is just throw it on. And when I get to that roof part, there's a little trick I can use to kind of save me a little time. 
need to get a lot more mixed here so I'm going to go a little bit faster and get that really really dark green mixed pull it clean put it on the knife and show you my little trick here <clears throat> when you have roof buildings or, or uh, roof building yeah I guess that building roofs <laughs> or things like that you can do something like this where you use a piece of paper to block or to mask an area so that you don't have to worry about missing it so I can do this sort of thing just put it right over that to the sheet of paper where that roof goes up in their area you can pull that sheet of paper down now you have to be careful about this sort of thing because it can get on the back of the paper and it can cause a little bit of a mess so we can do this I hope my head's not in the way there all right see what I'm doing there is just aiming for where I've got areas I've got indicated to be shallow all right now I'm doing I'm repeating the same motion over and over again where I'm uh, picking up the paint on the back of the knife and then just pushing it pushing it and moving the knife in various ways but pushing pushing the paint onto the canvas with with the blade, the back of the blade of the knife. And that's what I'm doing here in this area. Now I'm going to go to the other side and right here where the where the shot where the foliage comes out behind the roof, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. Where I've got indicated a shadow area. I refer back to the I refer back to the subject, to the resource, but Okay, so now that there's more light stuff coming, I'll just go ahead and let's go ahead and do that whole thing. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put the whole thing in shadow, and then I can come back and have a little more control of it later. There we go, right like that. Okay, and then we can do the same same thing on the on the uh, on the edge here. Now there is another way we can do that, and I'll show that to you now that I'm over on this side and that is uh, without using the the mask so got that a little bit rough right there we could move for an, uh, to a knife like this where we have that ability to cut a shape and we would come into the I'll do it this way we'll come into the paint and at an angle pull the blade down and create a roll of paint like that let me get just a little bit more create a roll of paint and then we could just come right up to the edge like this lay that down wiggle it around a little bit and pull it up so you could use either method if, if you if the uh, if the stencil method doesn't appeal to you then this might now one thing that you can do here is that you can pull, pull the blade back and forth to help shape uh, help shape the the positive space. So I'll just use this method now to finish uh, laying in the darks of those. So we'll do that right here. You see this has the ability also to make little corners like that. This blade does. And, and that's how I'm applying it. A roll of paint here. And then when I get here I have just slight angle uh, create a slight angle to apply that roll of paint and you move it up and down to create a sharp edge and then move it right down and allow it to create the angle that you see okay um, I need to do I have a little bit more on that side I can do the same thing now I'm going to wipe it off and I'm going to load the other side of it and come over here on this one and do the same sort of thing where I use the angle pull it up pull it up and create that shape and I can do well I'd keep going like that and as I said before I want this not to be a finished work but just showing you the technique um, I've, I've done that sort of thing now those two knives are my favorite for doing palette knife painting um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go back to I'm, I'm going to go back to this one now and show you very quickly uh, for the for the lights in those trees I need that uh, Get that a little bit lighter, so we'll do the same, a similar sort of thing where I'm, I'll, I'll mix up uh, with the orange and that blue. And let's see, yeah, that's close. That's good enough for the for the uh, where the lights hitting those trees. Now, 
just enough stuff here enough paint all right full palette knife clean now your tendency is going to want to mix and do this don't do that you lose control if you do uh, especially you'll lose control of the color all right so again I'm pulling this on the tip like that and make a, the roll more uh, a combination of on the edge of the blade and going towards the tip and now I'm going to just very quickly very quickly indicate where those lights are in the trees and I'm pushing the tip pushing the tip up to the edge and we see this lights coming down a little bit more like that now you can hear you can move the tip of the palette knife around and mix uh, where those colors would mix by pulling just not allowing the tip or the tip or the blade either one can do the mixing uh, when you get to the top like this uh, if you are overlapping trees or overlapping anything that's got kind of a ragged edge again you can load the back like that you can take the tip and just give it kind of an upward upward push like that and you kind of stamp it on I think maybe rather than uh, go through the whole thing, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I don't want the quick tip to be so long that you get bored before I finish. So I think it's just, uh, just showing you that. So once again, it's just a matter of loading the back for, for doing that sort of foliage thing, lo loading the back or the, uh, the blade and the tip on the back of the knife and then very lightly, and you'll learn a hand control. You learn how much it takes, but tip and push up. I mean, I, I should say, uh, kind of st a stamping motion and push up. And if you have little strays up there, you can do that too. So you can see now how if we continue this kind of thing throughout over here, you can see there how we'd be able to develop a really uh, nice, um, a nice interpretation of those trees in the background uh, by using the palette knife. Now I'm going to move on. I'm going to pretend I've already done this. I'm going to move on. I'm going to do the uh, on the roof. I'm going to do the the shadow area of the roof first. Now the shadow area of the roof, if you will notice, notice the color. It is uh, it's, it's reflecting the sky, and the color is actually a, a, a kind of a deep blue blue purple, and uh, it's uh, a little darker than the sky. So what I'll do here is the same thing, but adding more of the ultramarine blue to get get that color rather than bringing out the blue uh, um, I said ultramarine I meant phthalo rather than bringing out either the phthalo blue or um, or a purple itself so as long as I'm in the range I'm happy and I think that's is that the right value value first always value first color second because you can have the right you can have the right value of something and it will look right whether you've got the color of it or not you can have the right color and the wrong value and it won't look right now I'm going to go back to this knife I know this knife has a name I might have seen it but not paid any attention to it I don't know what it's called but this one's made by Blick um, but there are others on the market okay so I'm move into the shadow area. Now here again, this is what I'm doing. I'm picking or uh, flattening, flatten the area of paint. Then pick up a roll of paint just like that. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to juxtapose against the edge of that shadow and I'm going to pull it in an angle with the roof. And as I pull it, I let up on the pressure and push the knife closer uh, to being absolutely parallel with the surface. If it, if it la laps over like that, I don't worry about it. So I'm using a motion like this. I'm starting like that, and as I'm coming down, I'm getting flatter and flatter and flatter. The flatter the knife, the more paint gets deposited. The more, um, the more angle, I mean more uh, perpendicular to the canvas the knife is, the more it scrapes the paint away. So, all right, so I'm going to do that um, again. 
right here and I'm going to do it a little, a little faster this time. Now I'm going to push that around. I need to reload. See what I did there? I pulled off the uh, paint that was on the knife and then I'm reloading so that I have paint that I can control. And I'll move it up and down like that and then turn it flatter and let it deposit this way. Do the same thing right here. This is going to require a little bit of a, a little bit of um, acrobatics. I'll just, I'll just do it this way. This is another way you can do it is to pull it, use the edge this way and just come in the direction. Well, I didn't get enough paint. That's good for you to see too. Get enough paint right there on the roll, on the on the bottom side, enough of a roll, and then just pull in that direction right there. All right. Now you can scrape away. If you want to scrape away, you can scrape away um, like that. Scrape a little. You can scrape a little low. Uh, patterns into that if you want to or you can leave it like that now um i don't see any more of that that i want to so i'll go in um the the the, the uh where the light shining on the roof is much lighter um it's whole, it's it's pretty much that color but it's much lighter so we'll just throw a little bit of light in that and see now we can align it get the roll of the paint align it with the edge here move it back like that back and forth holding it at a letting it flatten out and then pull it down like this and uh sometimes you'll get you'll get exactly what you need with one pass and sometimes you won't like i did in that time but once you get the hang of how palette knife painting works then you can you can uh control all that so that's good right there. Now I'm going to pull the back of the knife up this way and help create that transition. Make that a little bit softer just by aligning the knife. So you can do a lot of lot of work within there. Um, now we we use that we would use that same technique as we pull into the barn itself, where we use the color. I'm going to pull the red over here. Lots of red. But this is a alizarin crimson. I called it red, um, but it has a little bit more. Has a little bit because it's in shadow. It's it needs a little bit more green, and so I'll just pull that from right here. Now this time, what I'd like to do is to show you how we can do that area with this palette knife. Cream paper towel. and flatten out flatten out the paint so i have control over what i'm picking up then i will roll the paint on the back of the knife just like that i need to put you can move this way and this way to get a nice roll and i can begin right here set the knife down and then gradually flatten the knife as I move along gradually flatten it as I move along now just like with a paintbrush your your paint's gonna run out but you go through the, the same process of loading the back aligning the brush I mean aligning the knife and then flatten it out as you go now on this on this one I'm going to use the paint I have on the back of it and come up here to the top and I'll just move it back and forth like that to make that straight edge. And then I'll reload the back side of it and come right here and move it just up and down. I'm not touching the, the not touching with the whole knife, just move it up and down. And I'll do the same thing right here. Just move it up and down. Now, uh, I, I'm just going to skip all these details and things because the purpose of this is to show you the palette knife method. It's not to do a painting for you. Um, now, so what would we do here? I would start with a, I would start, start with the red or where the light is shining first. 
So I need an area of that and I'm running out of space on this little palette. I'm going to work up here because it would be easier to pick it up. So I'll start out with the red there. I'm going to add enough of the orange to the red to do the lizard crimson. Let's call it a Add that orange back in and then we'll add white. Usually uh, when you mix white with lizard crimson you're going to get pink. But if you mix uh, cadmium orange with alizarin crimson, uh, and then, or you could mix cadmium orange, or you could mix uh, any, any yellow or orange, um, it, it then will enable you to uh, show that the redness of the color, and it will feel more red and not quite so pink. This is a very strong color. Let's see there, almost there, but not quite. So see, I'm using an awful lot of paper towel here. And let's put this light over here like this. Awful lot of paper towel, awful lot of uh, of wiping the palette knife in order to keep control of it. Now let's see. Still needs a little bit lighter, and this time I'm going to I'm going to alternate back and forth between the cadmium orange and the white. This makes me a pile there. Then pull that into the red. So this is uh, patience with color mixing. Now let's see, do we have it? I think that's probably, could stand to be a little lighter. Must believe what we see. So, get that mixed, okay that's probably mixed enough. Now that's more, that's closer. If you want to know what to do about the details such as this and this and this, when you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to actually do it, but um, you, it's easier if you do the whole area first and then take a smaller palette knife or an area and scrape away scrape away the paint from the area where you see those details like that. I'll do just a very brief thing here. Then take that smaller knife and, and just paint right over it like that. So for just I'm, I'm kind of like leaving that little that um, not quite so solid there. And so you would do the same thing here, and I'm not going to go over those details because I, I I don't want to um, make this an hour long thing by any means. So I just want to show you now we would cont we continue that same process, but um, just to show you how we can 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 use color against color. Now what we see here. Let's see which one. This one would probably be easier. So you use the knife that does the job. I can hear that question coming now. Um, you, you look at the area you're painting, the shape you're painting, and then you ask yourself which, which knife do I need to, to do that job. Alright, so uh, for this cast shadow we see right here, uh, I'll just use this knife and I'll just push it down like that, and bring it like this way, and then I'll bring it that way. A little bit more paint. Now again, start out with the edge, then you deposit it by laying the knife down or coming a little bit closer to uh, a, a, per, a um, parallel with the canvas. So you're going sort of perpendicular to parallel and, uh, and just deposit the amount of paint that you need. Okay. All right, now let's see what we have over here. So I'm going to just, uh, just a little bit now of that, uh, of the barn, I mean of the, of where the light shining on the barn. So just pull a little bit of this light, uh, light red, or the red in light, I prefer calling it. And let's see, this, in this case we can do what we, call, we would call a double loaded knife, where you can load it on both sides. So I'm going to load it on this side, so as you can see I have a roll, a roll of paint on this side and a roll of paint on that side but the blade is clear. So, do that again. Now to make sure I can do that with the blade to be sure that, that I'm going to have the alignment I need. Alright, now what I can do is align the, this with the, the edge there and just so simply pull it in that direction. Now I can flip the knife over to the other side, align it with the edge, Sometimes pull it back and forth. Now this time, 
This time I'm going to pull some of that color with it. But that can enhance. Let's do the same thing this way. We can do the same thing this way. Now I'm running out of color, so when you run out of color, you mix new color. Now I'm pulling off that uh, stuff, <laughs> the dark. This time I'm going to completely clean the knife so I'll have control. And you might think that's a lot of wasting paint, but if you get, do get into palette knife uh, painting, you will discover you either waste the paint or you waste the painting. And you have to make your choice which one you want to waste. So, now this is again just loading it to a little curl, a little roll on both sides. And align it, push it up and down with the edge, and then pull. Come back over this way. And if you pull, sometimes like, like this is happening now where, where the the color of one works in the color of the other. That can actually work to your advantage uh, because you'll find that that will give you a variety. And if you don't, if you, if you, if it offends you, you don't enjoy it, well, you can always move back and sort of iron it out like that. So I would move down, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but that's the way I would move down uh, the front side of that building and then do the shadow and I'll do just a little bit of that. Now that will be best done with this knife. Uh, once the light is in, you, you do this the same way you do the trees. You t you work, you're working with the, more of the point of this particular knife, the trial knife, and you simply work them in. Just work the shadow in, the, the cast shadow in as if it were trees itself and so on and then um, we maybe need to show you this sort of thing so then if you, you when you have the light shining between the shadows you just work it in so the whole thing works now you can see how just a few maneuvers of the palette knife and exploring the various things that it does you could see now how you could do a complete painting with a palette knife one, one, one more thing, uh, and people, someone's going to ask, how do you do the grasses? <laughs> All right, it's a, a very similar thing. Um, let's pull this, this in here, get just a little bit more of that, and I'm going to need some of the red in there because those are those are fall fall grasses, so they are not totally green, and they are pretty much in shadow. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter than I'm seeing it so that so that you can see what I'm going to show you here because we're just going to show you one more thing and beyond that my hope is if you're really interested in palette knife painting you'll take just what I've shown you here and explore it. I don't need to do a whole painting for to show you how to do anything. I like to show you technique and then you take that technique technique and make it your own and do your own painting. I'm not into creating paintings for people to copy. All right, so for doing grass, it, it's, a, it's a very similar thing. Once again, you load the knife on the back like that with the little curl or with the little uh, roll of paint. And you simply uh, you put it in place. Let's go right here. Put it in place. So you got to assume that barn is already painted. Put it in place and just lift up like, like this with the point of the knife like that you can create grasses with the edge of the knife if you were to have uh, like tree trunks and things like that you can create I'll, I'll go over I'll come somewhere else maybe right here just show you you can move the knife up and down like that to make straight lines You see just that little curl on the back the uh, that little roll on the back I should say the the degree to which you have it loaded will determine the thickness or the thinness. Not only that, but the degree which, uh, with which you have the knife turned. Now, if you have it absolutely uh, perpendicular to the canvas, you're not going to get much. But if you, if you have, I hope you can see this, but if you just barely turn it towards the canvas, change the angle, then you start getting. See how thin that little line is? So you can get that sort of stuff. So the, what you, the effect that you get here depends a lot on 
what, how much of the back of the palette knife is touching the canvas and how your arm is moving. So perhaps that gives you enough to go on. You can play with that and then if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments and we'll take it from there. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingmice.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. And thanks for watching.